Hey y'all. So I want to talk about moving on and, and leading into the next part of this, this walking and living in the counsel of the ungodly. Um, Matthew 10, 38, we'll go there first. It says, And who does not, and he who does not take up his cross and follow me, cleave steadfastly to me, conforming wholly to my example in living, and if need be dying also, is not worthy of me. Whoever finds his lower life will lose it in the higher life, and whoever loses his lower life on my account will find it in the higher life. So Jesus says, follow cleave steadfastly to me, conform wholly to me. So follow, cleave steadfastly, and conform wholly. So we are to follow, grab on, and conform. He is, again, the leader, the firstborn from, above, from the dead, teaching us how to live in this new kingdom. That's what he preaches and teaches in all of the villages that he goes to. Um, we're reading through the Gospels right now um, as a church for for Lent. And every time it says that he's teaching and preaching the good news of the Gospel, it is freedom from where we have been. And he says, follow me. This is how you do it. Follow me. Do what I do. So cleave steadfastly to Jesus. Matthew 16, 24 in the Passion says, and I actually have my Passion here, so let's go to that. 16, 24, then Jesus said to his disciples, if you truly want to follow me, you should at once reject and disown your own life. And you must be willing to share my cross and experience as your own, as you continually surrender to my ways. It is a continual, just like walking and living is habitual and it's where we've we've placed our tent it's in and out every single day it's the same for following jesus who walks and lives okay you can say not in the counsel of the ungodly but in the counsel of the godly if we are following his example and we are constantly um surrendering to his ways I love that Jesus changes us from glory to glory and that he takes us from faith to faith, right? He doesn't, if we're down here, he doesn't start way up here. And so it is a, it's a progressive learning to live as Jesus. And so when we read it in the word, then we meditate on it and put it into practice in our lives. And, and that's, that's how we do it. We do it step by step. It's not a, um, it's not a one and done. It's not a one time thing. We are progressively becoming more like him and surrendering to his ways. So to follow after Jesus means to do it, to pursue and to go after him. So when we look at, oh, there was one more verse I wanted to read. That was a, a different color. <laughs> Proverbs 14, 12. So we're going to talk about counsel next week and dig a lot into what that word actually means. But the one verse that came to mind quickly when I was studying and preparing for this was Proverbs 14. And it says, there is a way that seems right to a man. And you can probably finish that. <laughs> it says, um, Proverbs 14, 12, there is a way which seems right to a man and appears straight before him, but at the end of it is the way of death. Even in laughter, the heart is sorrowful, and the end of mirth is heaviness and grief. The backslider in heart from God and from fearing God shall be filled with the fruit of his own ways, and a good man shall be satisfied with the fruit of his ways, with holy thoughts, actions, which his heart prompts and in which he delights. So there is a way that seems right to a man. So to a man here would be mankind, the flesh, without the Spirit of God. And we talked about this a couple of days ago in that we, we 
in our in reading from Galatians that we trust and we are to submit every area of our lives for the Holy Spirit to direct. And this may not be a news flash for you, but he is smarter than we are. He knows all. He sees all. He has seen all. And the word says that he sounds even the bottomless things of God. So he knows the spirit of the living God living inside of me knows. And y'all, he knows what I need. That's good because I, I don't know what I need. <laughs> but he knows what I need. And so if I am seeking advice or plans or purposes of the ungodly, then I have taken away which seems right to a man and not asked my father about it. Him knowing what is before me. It is not worth what it's going to cost to not ask him first. And this tells us what it's going to cost. There is a way which seems right to a man and appears straight before him, appears straight before him. But at the end of it is the way of death. Now we're going to pick up here next week. I'm excited. I'll see you then. Bye, y'all.